the title of this session will be Pattern Based Responsiveness or Content Marketing Evolved. Maybe the title should have been Contextual Real Time Marketing in Joomla. Maybe it should have been Behavioral Responsive Analysis of Your User Experiences and How You Can Accommodate Them, accommodate them in Real Time with Content That Actually Matches What Your User Is Trying To Do. So, but you have to give it a title and that became this one. This is session number two. Session number one was last year at Gen Beyond in Prague, but we'll do a quick introduction to try and summarize some of the most important points. <coughs> so who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Almost the same, pretty much the same. So yeah, that's me. We, we do a lot of red stuff, and then we also do some uh, Norse stuff, you know, Nordic gods, Asia and Veni, and we'll get more into that. So uh, we have an agenda today, an introduction, uh, content marketing, pattern-based responsiveness, contextual marketing, then we'll get into SEO content marketing, which is our Joomla extension that works with all of this, and uh, then we will do something that is horrible. We will do a live demonstration. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Fuck, I don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, anyone has a Wi-Fi? I just realized I don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, anyone has a code that's not shared? Mm -hmm. Or we'll have to stick with screen shots? Yeah. Is it working? There's yeah. a speaker Wi-Fi. Okay, I'll just... So just... What's it called? Uh, Jab Wi-Fi speaker. Jab Wi-Fi speaker? Yes. Yeah. And it's a uh, Google Zoom now. Should work normally, I hope. It's the only thing I know. Yeah, it seems to work. That's nice. Great. Wow, so now we will have a live demo if it works. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's get slowly into it. Um, in the introduction, we just try and summarize some concepts here. So basically, marketing today online is about uh, using the internet and come on in uh, to. to act as a marketing platform. There's many different ways of doing it. One of the most frequent today is of course using something like AdWords. And then maybe if you're a little more evolved, if people visit your web website, you'll put a small cookie on it. And then when we go somewhere on a website with AdSense, it'll be retargeting. So you will follow people with your ads and stuff. But it's still pretty one dimensional in the sense that our website or our web shop is, is static. You do one web page and that's it, that's, that's what it does, what it is. So that's sort of the, the, the thing we see today. <coughs> so um, responsiveness and web development, well, we do responsiveness. Our websites are static, but they accommodate the viewports of the people visiting our websites. So, so we understand that there's some need to meet the user as they visit our website, we have to do some changes so they don't sit and zoom or have a, yeah, some, a, a big uh, eyeglass or something when looking on a phone on our site. So, so we understand that there's something we need to do and, and we're working our way into that. Um, even on Facebook, you see stuff like this, where now if, if Facebook knows that you have some friends that like something, then they will actually show the ads on Facebook to you because your friend, his friends like it. So they understand that there's some user behaviors that's ongoing and they're being used in marketing today, social media, search engines, etc. <coughs> so there's a bigger and bigger focus on the user. Instead of just, yeah, we build a website, uh, use it or not, that's what it is. Now we're slowly moving towards presenting it or utilizing the knowledge we have of, of, um, of the user and the users. Uh, connections and friends and the <coughs> behavior. So we're, we're evolving into something else. The search engines also does it. Um, the search engines try, when, when you use Google today, they will look at where you're sitting with GUIP and then they'll say, oh, Ronnie's in Barcelona uh, and he's looking for a restaurant. So Google will suggest restaurants in Barcelona because that's a better experience for me as a user. I'm more likely to click the AdWords on the, on the side so Google will earn more money. So search engines are slowly moving into that. <coughs> but what's really interesting with the search engines is perhaps not so much 
um, what people enter a search for, but what they're thinking when they are searching. And if we want to be successful in, in building content hierarchies and in, in building content platforms for users, we have to understand the fundamental mindset of the user when they go in and start searching for something. What, what is the parameters at play and how can we take that into the process of building a, a content hierarchy and a, a content marketing platform where our content structure is actually based on the way that the potential users are thinking. So there's something very interesting in, in how and why people are thinking something. And then going the uh, additional steps into what and when we can do to deliver the meaningfulness for them to doing that. <coughs> so pattern centricity is something where you start looking at the patterns you get. There's many, many different uh, patterns today. Um, some of the places where it's being applied in a big star right now is big data. So you start to collect a lot of data together and then you start processing and you start realizing, you aggregate the data and you see some certain patterns for users. Let's say you use big data to analyze the electricity usage of the city of Barcelona and suddenly you, you realize, oh, but in the night between three and four o'clock, we have a surplus of 20% of electricity so we might make it cheaper to use electricity between two or three o'clock in the night or something. So you're starting to, to use data and, and big data and behavioral data to respond to some changing user needs, to, to have this pattern centricity around what the users are doing. Um, and I've put up some examples of uh, some of the, the, the abilities you have today, platforms there is in the market today, where you can send all the data you can collect in, so Google has a SaaS service, the Predict service. We need to send the states into Google and they will return uh, somewhat simplified to start with, but, but some ideas of ways you can respond to this data. So let's say we had a lot of data on a module, how people saw that module, how many clicked that module. And then we use big data to collect all of these behavior data and then process them. Then we could in the future start to change the module so based on the people's behavior and their geo, IP, et cetera, we start to, to change it so it became more meaningful. So, uh, <coughs> but there's other uh, things, other prediction I.O. is open source, there's others. <coughs> so we all know uh, the answer to life is 42. Um, I don't know if it's a pattern, but that's what it is. So the patterns are interesting because they convey to us a way or method of understanding the users. Uh, and once we've established that, we're able to do something about it. <coughs> so, moving into content marketing, and now we've, we're going beyond the introduction. The introduction was very quick, but the first session was last year, so it had to be quick. <laughs> so, content marketing takes its vantage point in a position where we want to deliver meaningfulness uh, to the right users in a way that they will respond to what we're doing. Fundamentally, instead of trying to push people to buy our products, push people to buy our ideas or statements, we want to present them to people because we understand what the people are, are looking for, what they are searching for. We want to present it in a way so that people will actually come to us. So we will pull people into, into, into our platforms, into our websites, and then they will read the, the marketing messages or about the products or whatever it is we do and because it's, it's so friendly that we put something out there for them to get something out of then we're in a different dialogue with a potential customer so we're not pushing anyone to buy our products we're pulling them in and they think it, it adds value so that's an, sort of fundamental what content marketing is it focuses on, on storytelling and indirectly or as a side effect then we, we might sell something or we might improve a relation with a customer. And the more of those touch points we have over time, the more likely the customers will be to be staying around or buy more or their loyalty will increase. So that's sort of the, the fundamental thing. So, um, and I got a little quote on the wall, but um, I will share the, the slides later too. So um, I have an example here from one of our clients Helpy is a, a wholesaler 
of equip, uh, equipment for boats in Denmark. Back when we started with uh, Palby, they had two big competitors. I think today they are dying slowly <laughs> because what we're doing with Palby is really interesting. But this is a good example. If you own a boat and then your boat can get a disease that's called osmosis, and every year uh, the boat owners, there will be so and so many thousands of boat owners that will get osmosis. And everyone who hasn't had a boat for 40 years and already knows, but actually bought a boat within recent years, will be in a situation that they don't have a fucking clue what osmosis is. So they will go to Google. And why will they go to Google? Because they, they want something meaningful. They want to get help with a problem or a problem situation. So they will enter, uh, my boat has gotten osmosis. And then Pelby will be number one on Google out of 3,370 results in Denmark. But let's say that maybe there's 2,000 boat owners in Denmark that gets this every year, and four or 500 of them will do the search in Google because they don't know what to do. So that's four to 500 potential customers a year on a landing page you spend maybe an hour making. So you're sharing your knowledge and you're sharing something that is meaningful and valuable to people, and then they will come to you, and now you can then start to sell them products. So. Um, Let's see if this works. Mini live demo, beta test something. Something is loading. Something is loading somewhere. So this is like a landing page. So uh, osmosis in your boat. A lot of text here, some examples, how do you fix it, which products can you fix it with. And that's pretty much it. So, this is uh, four or five hundred orders a year on these products. And the customers will then also order other things, they will come back and buy again and again and again and again. Because you've done something that most others didn't. You've given them some valuable information, so they don't have to fix their boat. So they don't have to buy a new boat two or three years later. <coughs> Great. So we'll just... And I had the example here too, I think. So, pattern-based responsiveness moving forward from content marketing. Because content marketing is not really focused on the patterns as they emerge but more on an analysis of which patterns are out in the market. And then we try to write a content marketing that matches the needs of the potential users. But moving forward, there's something more we can do. We can move from content marketing to contextual marketing. And the missing link in that is the pattern-based responsiveness. So, when people come to your website on a smartphone, you give them a small ex screen experience that is optimized for that. When people come to your website and they go into a category of furniture, they go into a shelf system and they pick a shelf that is with a uh, oak material, then we already have an emergent pattern that tells us that this visitor is actually interested in furniture in oak. So instead of showing the potential customer 6,000 different products in 18 different kinds of wood and finishes and everything, maybe we should just highlight the oak products to this user. So that gives us a possibility to suddenly start to respond to the user's behavior and start to change all of the content on our websites. Call to action modules, landing pages, product bases. So instead of building one website, a static website, as basically that's what we do today, we're going to build a dynamic website that can completely change and alter all of the content experience for the user in real time based on what we pick up and the rules we create and, and the patterns we get to understand from the users. We're able to change all of that. <coughs> so uh, I made a little quote here too. Uh, it doesn't have a title because I wrote it, so yeah. Um, so remember to quote me if you use this quote. <laughs> so um, using patterns of behavior as identifiers of meaningfulness to the user and then responding to it by presenting the right stories uh, to the right users 
um, renders marketing efforts far more efficient than we have ever done before. We know in, in traditional marketing, if we do a branding campaign, you spend 10 million euros and, and you get your company a marketing campaign on the buses in your city for three months. So that's about people recognizing your company name, slowly building a brand up over time, building the, the, the understanding, the loyalty, the knowledge of your product base, etc., etc. But in a digital marketplace, where you can relatively easily get some users <laughs> into your website, you can pay them to come, you can advertise, there's all sorts of ways of doing it. Every time one of these users visit your website, you have a potential value, a potential sale on your website. But the reality is that whenever you get 100 visitors, you might sell something to one or two, or you might get a contact or a lead or whatever it is from one or two people, maybe three people. The best web shops on the planet might have a conversion rate on five or seven percent. But the 90x percent of all the visitors go straight through your website and you have no clue what's hap what happened. You, you don't work with it, you don't, you don't contact the clients. Yes, Google Analytics can actually pull out the data of the hosts that, that's visiting your website and you could call them up. And out of the last 100 clients I talked to, I think zero did it. Because it's, it's too far away, it's too technical, it's too hard. So, in today's market, we see a lot of people working with marketing automation, with online marketing, with content marketing, with email campaigns, etc. But all of this is always in external systems. It's never founded on the website. It's never based on having a central place in your website where all of this is happening and we're, we're constantly, constantly working with it. <coughs> so, um, now we jump into the contextual marketing. So we're combining content marketing and pattern-based behaviors into real-time contextual marketing. <coughs> so we have some basic or fundamental parameters uh, or dimensions, we already read, with demographics, with ge geography, history and events. That's sort of the first four we can work with. An event being something people do on your website. Um, a classical example could be that you have a visitor that will click all the images. So let's say you code a small Joomla plugin that watches when people click images. And if people have clicked more than five images on your website, then you make all the images twice as big. And maybe you start to reduce your text paragraphs into 50%. Because you clearly, you have a visitor on your site that's very visually oriented, that is browsing through your website. They're clearly not reading all the full text and everything. If they were, and, and looking at data specification, they would be cl clicking the anchor text and not the images, because that's what those sort of people do. So there's substantially different ways of using a website or a web shop. So uh, <coughs> that's what we're going to do. We're going to understand the users better to be able to deliver uh, better content marketing, better information, more ideal products, whatever it is we do on our website to these users. <coughs> and I have a little quote again. You can quote me on it again. It's okay. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> so, um, how have we worked with this? Well, the last three years we've been working our way into this SEO content marketing. SEO content marketing is a component that is installed into Joomla and basically it takes over all the content. It takes over how you use models, it takes over how you do layouts and uh, inner templates and everything like that. It's a complete CCK that puts everything into one system. <coughs> so it's focused a lot on empowering why are web agencies, uh, sorry, advertising agencies or web agencies or marketing agencies building crap websites on WordPress. It's because they're not able to build quality websites. So they download a $29 template, they replace eight pictures, and then they sell it to a client. It's not really, it's not craftsmanship. It's mass production of standardized crap. But no matter how much you polish a turd, it's still a turd. And we're not building static websites and $29 templates. We're building websites that will respond, alter, and change into what the user needs. So we're not building websites. We're building web transformers 
uh, for marketing instead, something quite different. <coughs> so, uh, live demo facts, because now it's time for live demo. It's an existing Joomla Red Shop uh, business to consumer solution. I think we made the first version five or six years ago. Um, we installed and implemented a SIA just with basic needs uh, usage for Star. Uh, basically, what we're doing with this client, this is not the biggest client on the planet, I might add, um, but we're starting to collect user data, user behavior, so we're able to slowly start to create some wizard patterns, understand what the users are doing. And, uh, and to do that, we've done a few things. Um, but this customer is starting to understand that instead of having eight salespeople that goes out and tries to push people into buying his product, in the coming one or two or three years, half of his salespeople will actually be content marketing editors that will work on the website to optimize the rules of how they present modules and all of that. So <coughs> now we will uh, go into uh, the dangerous thing of a live demo. Uh, I'll just slide back there. Up over here. <coughs> it's not so good when you can see what you're writing. Let's see, we, we land on the website. Yeah, we landed on the website. So they're selling um, office furniture, <coughs> basically your desks and whatever, your chairs and all of that. And um, it's pretty straightforward. When we got this client, they actually had three other providers and three different systems, including one Presta shop, one Magento open source, and I don't know, a third system. Uh, and they had three different brands. The challenge was that when you get a, a small uh, cabinet, um, then when you have different variations for the type of wood and the finish and the shelves, and if there's a door in front, etc. Then you have 13 times 13 times 13 variants of the same shelf cabinet. There's actually 2,200 different variants. So the factory that produces the materials for these furnitures, they wanted uh, 20,000 euros for the pictures for one shelf system. And they're selling many shelf systems. So the owner here told them, he uh, talked to a lot of web agencies, how can we fix this? And basically they couldn't. So I got an idea, why don't we just use a canvas image in the back and then we put 13 images on top, 13 images on top again and 13 images again. Then we do the same with, with 40 pro products. So uh, to do that, basically, just to give some context here, we built a small plugin for RedShop that layers the attribute pictures instead. I think we used two or three hours to build the plugin. So it was a very simple task in reality. It was just understanding what was the user trying to do. So, but that's sort of how we got into this originally. That was five, six years ago or something. So he's been running his web shop for five or six years. He's, he blocked a little SEO block sites and external sites, and he's been working on different things and a lot of AdWords and stuff. Um, we just take one of these shelf systems here. So, but he, this is a very big brand for this in Denmark now. The Danish word of the domain name is officefurniture.dk. So it's a pretty good name too. That helps a little too. Um, he's actually starting to get interior design companies linking to an affiliate system we set up here. So they will link their clients over to buy the furniture, and then give a kickback to and stuff like that. But basically here you have the variant, so you pick the, the color and then you pick it here and then it just puts layers on top of the images very basic and you can put it in the car so but that's not so interesting uh, what's interesting is of course in the back end am i typing it right yeah. never put your password in live session you know always yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Change me now. <laughs> so uh, this is a pretty basic uh, Joomla admin page. You've all seen that. And there's a, an ocean of components installed here. 
Uh, the red merchant is our AdWords, uh, no, our, our Google merchant stuff integration, red shop, a little of each, you'll know some things. Um, there's some Acuba people in the house, I think, uh, so it's here. Um, but the interesting thing here is a senior content marketing. So um, it loads, loads up like this. And basically, then you have a dashboard showing you relevant information when you work with your content. We, uh, we talked to a hundred companies. All hundred companies had Google AdWords, uh, sorry, Google Analytics. All of them tried to at least once a year log into Google AdWords and see if the curve went up or down. Uh, none of them actually used Google Analytics for anything. Nothing at all. No deeper analysis, no custom reporting showing behavior of funnels or whatever. Just looking on, on the front page, is the, is the visitor number going up or down? Or if there were, was a web shop, is the, is the e-commerce tracking, is it positive or negative? That's it. So people don't use it. So now consider that you have external email uh, marketing. You have external this and this and this and social media and everything. So if you are a content editor in a company like this, then you have 17 different logins or 20 different logins and you have to work in all these systems. So how many companies can afford to hire four or five specialists in their field who are experts in all of these things and work seriously with content marketing and they way into contextual marketing? Not that many. So maybe we should do what we did here. We pulled the relevant data from all the external places and put it into the place we're actually building the content. So that's sort of the overall idea. We're trying to simplify. Contextual marketing, big data, machine learning and all of that is perhaps not that simple, but it at least has to appear to be effing simple for the users who's going to write the content. <coughs> so that's it. So here we can see some um, overall numbers. We don't have conversion tracking on right now, but we also have A-B split testing. So just shortly to show you here, we have categories, items, and call to action modules. That's basically the content. So if you have a content editor that logs into this Let's say log into Joomla. You set up the ACL so they go directly to SEO, content marketing, and everything they can see is actually these three buttons. Because mm -hmm. that's the only thing they need to work with. Everything else is handled in other places. So then we have AB split test, which basically means if you have a, a, a call me module on your website, then you just do an alternative and you put in a cup of coffee cup instead and it says, uh, let me uh, let you have a cup of coffee and talk about your business. So you can do variants or alternatives and in real time you can see what's most efficient. So if you do another call to action module, you test it in an A-B split test and you have 8% more conversions on that. Maybe that's what you should do in the future. But it's built in tools to do it right now. There's more technical stuff, there are visit patterns, visit flows and referrals, where people are coming from and all of that. So we took all of the relevant stuff from Google Analytics and other places and put it in here. So, uh, yeah, we just start with categories. A category is a category is a category. It's not so interesting. The interesting part perhaps is that we're actually down here on the fields, we actually have category fields. So your category is also a CCK element, and we also have templates for categories, you can have different kinds of categories, and have relations between categories, you can have many-to-many -many relations between categories. And why is that important? Because when you have many-to-many -many relations between your categories, then you can actually create content hierarchies that is based on the way your users are thinking. So instead of having the users come into your website, and then there's only one way down into things, you can have two different ways, or three different ways, or five different ways that fits the way that users are thinking. That alone gives Google's little search bot, the little crawler bot, the ability to get a semantic understanding of your web content a lot better than it ever could before. So building content hierarchies with many to many relations will extremely improve your, your search engine optimization, your SERPs and your indexes in Google and other search engines. So, um, then we have items, and what is an item? It's relatively simple here. 
This site hasn't been, I think we installed a CEO five weeks ago, something like that. I think we have maybe 100,000 users in, in those five weeks here as data now. But slowly he's starting to build, you see the title's landing page, the category's is a partner page, and suddenly he's starting to work in, so now he's building a partner page for each of his partners in his affiliate system. I talked to him the other day and he said, I just made a deal with a newspaper in Denmark. There are two websites, one's called Finance and the other's called Börsen like the stock market paper. So he's selling an office uh, chair at 5,000 Danish kroner. But he has this uh, advertising campaign running on these two uh, websites for these two newspapers. So if people come from any of those two new web, new, uh, newspapers to his website, to the same landing page, then it has to show the, uh, the, the office chair at a discounted price. But if everyone else in the world gets into the same concept page, it has to show the normal price because he's only interested in selling it cheaper to those people in that campaign. So how do you do that normally? Well, you don't. You try and do a, a, a hidden landing page somewhere with a, a small URL or an alias or something and then you will use that in the campaign. But people could easily distribute it all over and it would be impossible to control. But here you can go and you can set up some rules for things. So you go, well, it's the referral on this page of this call to action module. It's only if they're from these two websites. If people do not come from these two websites, then they will not see the product at that price. But they're slowly working into it. Um, if you go into the CTA modules, then we, we don't really have a lot here yet. Um, we are perhaps not on the quickest internet on the planet right now, but that is necessary. Actually, so you see, we don't have any call to action modules right now. Uh, but to set this up for this time, we're going to have a retro product module. And then we're going to use one with a rule set that if they come from those two websites, we will demonstrate at one price and alternatively at the other. So call to action modules that can look at QIPs, at where people are coming from, at dates, and all these data. But does that mean you have to recode all of your Joomla modules for it to work? Uh, actually, it doesn't. <coughs> because if you go down to the module types you have down here, and then you click New, then basically it will just search through your website for any Joomla module you have installed. You just pick it here, and then it's instantly available with a full new tab where you can set up rules for displaying it on all of your website. And I'll just show you. So we could take the Let's say we took the menu accreditation CK module here um, and then we click save here. I don't know if I actually click save. Let's try again. Yeah. And now the menu accreditation module here has now become an SEO content marketing module. So now it's a call to action module where we can oversteer it, we can collect behavioral response patterns and all of that. So, um, we go up to the call to action modules. And then we click new. And then we select the, uh, yeah, let's take our menu accreditation module here. And then it has a lot of tabs with options already, of course. But now it has gotten some, uh, some new options. So suddenly we can now control our module, uh, which country are people coming from, which postal codes are they coming from, uh, which referrer. Let's do a really classical one. Let's consider referrer, I wrote facebook.com. And then on the front page on my website, I did a, a module position where I had an ad for our Facebook group. So anyone who visited our website from Facebook, I would show a module advertising for our Facebook group maybe twice as big as normal, or something like that. But then I'm responding to a probable behavior of the people visiting the website, and I would maybe get 30 or 40% more followers on Facebook. Over one or two years, that, that has a big effect. <coughs> so uh, it could also be that you start using the regions or the cities, and let's say you're in Spain, you go into the website, and then normally you have to contact our sales department on the side, well, now we're in Barcelona, so maybe we should show the Barcelona sales department. And if you're in Madrid, we will show the non-Catalonian sales department. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's an, uh, some options in that. Um, it could also be like in Denmark, if you're from Copenhagen, you might use 
images in an image slider module at the top with uh, big city buildings and stuff. But if you're on the west coast, you don't want to you don't want to even mention Copenhagen. People on the west coast are fishermen and uh, factory workers and stuff. They don't like Copenhagen. They don't like people from Copenhagen. So you don't want to put Copenhagen in your content marketing. You really don't, because you're scaring away people. So if people are from the west coast of Denmark, we, we show uh, fishermen boats in the ocean and stuff like that. And that will help to sell the story. The people are from Copenhagen, who show pictures of, of skyscrapers and big city and stuff like that, because that will work over there. But having the ability to actually, in real time, adopt your website to the people who's visiting it is a really, really empowering thing to do, be able to do. <coughs> of course, you would also pick a device, include or exclude it. So you could take, well, it's only if it's a tablet user. It's if it's a tablet user who wants to do an, an ad for our app on Google Play or whatever it is. Um, <coughs> you have these options. Of course, you could also do domain. Let's say um, a big Spanish company is Telefonica, right? So let's say I wanted, I've been trying to get Telefonica as a client for the last two years. So let's say I, I did a custom module on the front page and it was never seen by anyone unless their domain name when they visit me is Telefonica.com because companies of a certain size and up, they have their own host names, their own firewalls and VPNs and everything like that. So you can actually trace all of that. So if Telefonica visited our website, I would stand in the middle. Instead of my component output, there would be a module position in the top where I was standing with a, with a sign that said, Hey, Telefonica, mm -hmm. uh, let me be your new supplier. For some people, that would be too much. But for others, that might be what did the final thing to go, what just happened? How is he able to do that? So there's a lot of possibilities in this. Um, so, but we just used a random installed Joomla module as the example here. Uh, and of course then you can start to combine things. But let's get into something that is maybe even more interesting. We have the visit flows here. So this is the visitors on the website. Um, let's see, we have some different providers and stuff here. Um, yeah, Novo.dk here is, is maybe, it was direct only one visit. Let's take this one, this was from the uh, city of Kalling in Denmark. We have a postal number, that one. Uh, seven page views, let's try to open it. So, that's the domain. We do have an SEO web service that will enrich everything you see. So we'll also show a picture of the image and we'll show what sort of company it is, how many employees, social media links and stuff like that. So, but basically, they went into the website, then they went into the shelf systems, they picked a certain model, and they saw a different model, and then they went into a third model. And then they actually started clicking on the variant choices, what sort of finish and what sort of wood, etc. So now we know that this guy was looking on the material called anthracite, uh, decor laminate. I'm a furniture idiot, so don't ask me what it is. But, but that's something with the wood and the surface, I think, maybe. That's all. So, okay, so now we know that. But then actually the guy went back into the first model he looked at, and then he went into a completely different one, and then he looked at something specific, and then he left the website. This guy did not become a customer. He was a little confused, but he was looking at shelf systems and he had some preferences. We could see that, but also see which company he's coming from. So what do we do now? Now we actually have some data, some real data. Do we make a new uh, call to action module so if people come in another time from the same company or with some of these patterns, then we show a module where we highlight a specific model? Or do we say, uh, wait, if you come from the front page, into the shell systems, into the Jive quick one here. Um, and then you look on a Jive with anthracite decor laminate. That's four, that's four interesting, we'll just take this one too. That's four really interesting steps. So people that comes into a website and shows this behavior, those four steps for a website, who want to make a clear call to action module inside, who will propose to them that they should buy one of these uh, shelf systems. So we put the four checkboxes and then create a new visit pattern. 
gives us some interesting title, blah, 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 blah. And we save it. So now when we go down into it, now it will be created as a wizard pattern. We go into the wizard patterns, we can see the different wizard patterns. We can open them, we can add new steps, we can reorder steps and everything like that. Then we can go back up to our call to action modules. And then we can actually, when we do something new here, let's, let's take a, the Accu mailing module for instance. <coughs> let's say you, you, in Accu in mailing, you made 10 different mailing lists, one for each product type. In this case, we made a mailing list for shelf systems with this surface. So now we want to make sure that anyone that has this behavior on the website in the future, we will show the, the mailing list module that suggests that they sign up for this mailing list. Because we have data that shows that people are interested in this sort of product. So we can do it like this, and then we'll go into the display options. <coughs> it, looks, it looks a little different than the accumulating uh, module, I must say. I don't know why, but... So, visit patterns. Yeah, let's, let's not use the accumulating module then. We'll just use something else. I think the developer will uh, buy beer tonight for that one. <laughs> so, uh, display options, visit patterns, w oh, what did I write before? Does anyone remember? <laughs> blah, 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 oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't remember. So, but basically, you can manually go in and look at all the visits and flows. You can find an interesting user, maybe from a company you recognize, Go and identify their behavior, then you just create a new standard rule. This standard rule can be applied for any module on your website using the CTA module system. So, um, how, how are we on time? Uh, five minutes? Five minutes, yes. Okay. So, um, but basically, this system has templates into it too. So what we'll do when we deploy for our client is we'll do an uh, analysis of the customers they have. We will create personas, we'll work with segments, we'll build a content hierarchy that is based around the understanding of these clients. Then we'll create different templates for the different kinds of content. They have they could be employees or departments or products or stories or news or blogs or whatever. The type of content, I mean everything is just content and action. And in this place we do a content type for each of these. Then we do the template that matches these. And then basically if you go and create a new, uh, a new field, like for an employee template, you get a new twig tag you can put into a template so you can control it and work with it like that. Um, so that's pretty much what it does. But then um, if you go into the items here, it does some things. Um, maybe we should just... It's a little... Uh, the internet is not so good right now. Let's do... Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not loading. So, um, the other session just finished, so they're using all the internet now. I guess that's how it is. <laughs> but, but basically, consider that you're, you're making uh, two new articles a week. You're doing that the next year. And then you log into a website, you go into items, you want to create a new content marketing article. Then you go up here and you click by conversion. At an instant, it, it lists all of your content articles by conversion. So you can see, oh, the article I did one year ago has actually sold for 1.2 million. Well, if you're writing a new content article tomorrow, then what should you do? Maybe you should do the same you did with that article. And that's sort of where the focus is here that as a content editor, you get the data you need to become better at doing your job and the tools you need to do it, to do it simpler. That's also why we have a template system. It's not a what you see is what you get editor. Because if you're a content editor, if you spend three hours styling everything and do it manually every time, then it's not really productive. You need to make sure it's looking the same way every time. Um, so, we also did something like columns here. So then force everyone to see all the columns. You can go in and you can pick for yourself what sort of columns you want on all the views. So it's dynamic. It's a neat little thing. I mean, if you go to Joomla articles and there's eight, nine columns, I don't think my end users have ever used the nine columns to anything. So maybe hiding some of them would be some way to make things simpler. 
So, uh, but you can do that here now. So, um, right now we're working on a UX overhaul and we're adopting some new widgets and stuff. I was actually considering to, yeah, I'll just run the last two slides and then uh, maybe show you a screenshot. So, um, let's move into the next one. It's not really, there it was. So we have a roadmap, time loss, abstraction levels, so it's even more flexible and stuff like that. Uh, we want to do an, a UX update. Already now you can see that from a UX perspective, it seemed pretty simple. So, so it wasn't so complex, but it can be even better. We need to add channel support. So when you do a content post, you just cross off, you want to go to LinkedIn and Facebook, and then there will be templates for that. We just write one content article and distribute everything. And then we're doing standard integrations. The ERP side is for e-commerce clients, but also due to CRM clients. So consider that when you get all this data, then you can send it over to your customer relation management system, so your sales department, etc. Every time one of your customers visits your website, there will be an update in your customer relations management system, so they have full knowledge to operate on and, and empower that relation with your customer. We're working with a product information management system and stuff like that too. Um, so that's sort of the roadmap right now. Uh, questions? Any questions before the show the screenshot? Yes? I'm wondering who actually ends up being responsible for the content that goes out to the customer? Because you have to the web design issues at the beginning, often it's like your SEO experts come and design your website and everything, and like yeah. Yeah, your junior developer and other sites and your, your marketing and UX guys and everything. But this requires, this kind of content marketing requires constant ongoing updating, seeing what the user's actual part yeah. is. But, but, but there's multiple answers. For some companies, they will be hiring an advertising agency. Yeah. Advertising agencies in the 80s and 90s used to help companies tell better stories. Yeah. So consider that every year when the new season starts, the advertising company comes with the new storylines of 2017, new product images, scenario images, and helps the company to perform better. It's a classical marketing task, but in the last five, ten years, advertising agencies are no longer doing that, and instead they're building WordPress websites which makes no sense. So, so for some customers, it will be hiring the advertising agencies, marketing agencies to help them. For others, it's an internal question. But so they'll need the, the expertise to understand things like module placement and all this stuff? Well, you don't need to be an expert to place a module. I think you can learn that relatively easy. But, but they need to get education, they need to start working with it. But if you can say, if a company has 100 salespeople today, traditional salespeople, in five years, they won't have 50. So, so all those resources will go away from, from push-based, cold canvas, uh, car riding, customer seeking sales work, and into something different. When you have the potential of having 100 visitors on your website, your job as a company in the future is to maximize the results you get out of that. And to do so, you need to press all the buttons. You need to write the proper content. You need to analyze the data. I absolutely agree. That's what needs to be done. Yeah. Not sure whether it, 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 it's the marketing people that have to be doing it. Uh, yes. Essence, yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. The but 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 it's a it's a business transformation where the tra traditional sales department becomes smaller and the marketing department becomes bigger, yeah. and then the marketing department supplies better leads of higher quality, better understanding of the potential clients and the existing clients into the sales department. <laughs> so it becomes a higher quality. Customers are no longer loyal. They don't Google anything and change uh, supplier four times a month. So when you have the customer, you have, to, you have to enhance that relation. If you get a newsletter today, let's say you bought a, you bought a pair of pants for your son or something, you get three new newsletters afterwards for girls' dresses. Now, now they've destroyed the relation, right? They, it's going in the wrong direction. So it's because it's not relevant. If you go into a physical store and buy a pair of pants for your kid, then you come back two weeks later and they remember you. They'll ask you, oh, how, how's it going with your kid? And is uh, the pants okay and everything like that? What stores do you use? Are they like that? <laughs> <laughs> they, they are, they are. Of course, it depends on the store. 
But in general, most organizations and companies have been built up by uh, getting relations to other people, maintaining those relations, strengthening those ties and relations by relevancy. Mm -hmm. They're just calling people up for uh, being an idiot for two hours on the phone, right? But saying something meaningful to the people. So it's how we've been doing business forever. And now we need to actually also do it online. We can no longer have the real world and then this sort of static digital term we put online. We have to have full businesses that does everything and uses the same processes in both places. Is all companies on the planet going to transform to do this the next two weeks? No. Will some of the companies die the next five or ten years because they don't? Yes, they will. Because if they don't understand that fundamentally, then the, the demand has changed, people's needs has changed, so the companies have to move over to where the demand is today and where it's moving even more and more. So a lot of it is teaching the companies, it's helping the companies to transform digitally. So it's not just building a website, it's facilitating a process where the company themselves also can learn to work with stuff like this. You can hire external experts, but let's say you are a 20 employee company, you cannot afford to hire external experts for everything. You cannot, you cannot hire five professional experts to work everything internally either. So it needs to be a balance where, where you get the help you need and then you get the, the qualified education, etc. to work with some of it. Bigger companies will then hire advertising agencies, marketing agencies, etc. They will rehire the web agencies to come back and implement the new templates and the new CTA modular structure, whatever it is. So there's a lot of, in general, it's going from doing one project from one client to doing 100 projects for one client over five years. Because there's a constant, there's a constant feedback and a loop process. When the client gets to see the behavioral data of their own visitors to their own website, after looking for five minutes they go, what the? Suddenly they realize that it's no longer just a, a dead website, it's something that's living. And they say, oh, but, but hey, we got that client four years ago, I know the guy from that company. They can recognize the, the domain name and the, and the company. Oh, what did he look at? Oh, they're considering to buy a new uh, shelf rack system, whatever. I'll just give him a call. So, so today a lot of CEOs fundamentally see the internet and website as a cost, not as an income. This is part of a process of transforming companies into understanding that it's actually an income base. It's a place where you get and retain and expand the relation loyalty to your customers and you can sell more products. When we do these projects and work with these things, we can often create um, results of 200 and 300 to 400 percent within six to 12 months. So that's extreme results, extreme results. Mm -hmm. But it's also a different process. It's not a 40-hour website. It's a very different process. And, and I think most of the time I spend is actually working with the people in the organizations and getting them into the process and, and the facilitating the change they do. Um, so I just, that was a long question, so I just quickly want to say blah blah blah, follow up, thanks. And then I wanted to, um, let's see if I can figure out how to do that. I just want to show you a single, uh, just a single slide of what we are doing right now. Um, Can you see this? Mm -hmm. So basically, this is the dashboard we're building right now. So you log into this here, and that's what you get. And that's what you need. I mean, nine out of 10 companies that have Google Analytics today, if they have these information on their website, which is what we're actually collecting with us here, then why do you need Google Analytics? I mean, you should have it, keep it. But if you're not using it, and you should be using these data when you create new content, then have the data here we're actually creating content. So don't pretend to be using Google Analytics if you're not using it. And in reality, most people are not, yes? Is that pulling data from Google Analytics? No, it's internal. Cool. So you don't actually need it. So the thing is here, it's abstract a lot. When you saw before, went into the visitor flow, it actually registered what product variants people were clicking on on the images. That's a, Google, that's a Joomla plugin. 
So it's an abstract to a level where we can take any Joomla extension, just do, let's say, instead of having visitors and conversions, we want to have visitor, interest, lead, card, checkout, conversion. Then we do four or five small Joomla plugins, install them, and then our entire system to monitor the behavioral uh, activities of the visitors will now have seven different event statuses which means that now it will count everything together as engagement, except for visits, and it will do the final conversion counts too. So by doing that, and, and that could be anything, let's say you install a, a Joomla com uh, YouTube component, and then you create uh, two small plugins to register when people start and stop, or if they forward the video, then we can have those data in here too. Yes? Uh, can it be used as a component or just as a service? It's, it, it is a component as it is now, but, um, but it's a, a component we are only going to, um, we're, we're, we're launching it through a partner channel on a few country marketing. Yeah. So it's different. We're not, this is not a mass market product, of course. This is not a, a Word, um, WordPress killer or anything like that. And do you, um, so I, it's, uh, I just browsed the English website. Yeah. So I'm not very good at Danish, uh, so, but it was not mentioned there. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, no, you mean uh, SEOconsultmarketing.com or <coughs> Red, Red Web? Uh, Red Web. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is on the on the US. On, on the Danish, it, it is. is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we're working on a lot of things. Uh, for us, I, you uh, all know how much. Um, see, right now I do not have a customer which would be uh, suitable for that. But I got my for for my which is totally over the top. For that, for my kettlebell side, yeah, yeah, uh, but I would be interesting being using that, so may I get familiar with it, so I maybe use it with another customer yeah. later comes in. So, but basically, this this we are only going to deploy a CEO of content marketing and a vanilla commerce platform through partners. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, uh, existing Joomla web agencies and consultants that are already working with Joomla and maybe has an easier way into this is potential partners. So, but we want to make sure that the quality on all the solutions with this, wh wherever it is in the world, is, is, is high. So it has to be good quality. Uh, Peter, you will have to buy me a beer later for going early. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, but basically that's how it's going to look. So we're doing this final uh, UX thing here to try and make it look really, really, really... Uh, I mean, this is complex. AB split test. What the fuck did you say AB split test? Or is it something with JavaScript and Google has a platform and... I mean, half the implementers are lost in that process. Now you go into AB split test and you add a variant or an alternative. Just click what other Joomla module would you like to show. Oh, it's a custom HTML module. And now you can control all of that. I want to see for the next thousand <laughs> visitors which works more. And you have all those data in there. So um, that's pretty much it. I think our time is gone and then some. So uh, thank you for uh, attending and uh, yeah.